Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to Muhammad's Boom Boom Room, where all of my guests either agree with me completely or they go boom. I am your host, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon me. And with me now is the greatest supervillain of all time, the clown prince of crime, the, the jester of genocide, the ace of knaves, the caliph of clowns, live and in person, it's the one and only Joker! pre-recorded for this time zone. Don't interrupt me! But I'm an agent of chaos, Putin! The only agent of chaos here is my detonator! But if you interrupt me again, I'm going to be an agent of pain. Oh, I love pain. I love suffering. I love dead puppies and severed heads and spattered blood and great big giant explosions. <laughs> Then you must love Al-Islam! Love it? If it had a can like Harley's, I'd marry it. <laughs> Alhamdulillah! Even the world's greatest supervillain sees the beauty of Al-Islam. Oh, it's beautiful, all right. Islam is the greatest killing joke ever told, and you are history's greatest comedian. That's... Why we love you. Just imagine an ideology that spread for 14 centuries by terrorism and torture, dismemberment and rape, seizing every little boy and girl in its path as slaves and sex slaves, piling up treasures of pilfered gold and gems, all while tearing down prior cultures, obliterating music and science and philosophy and every other form of enlightenment that stands in its way, leaving nothing but oppression and cruelty and a joyless instability wherever it scurries only to reach the present and find politicians and journalists and educators and entertainers cheering it on, their riotous applause drowning out the cries of its maimed and deformed victims. Humanity's love affair with Islam only proves my point. Deep down, we're all attracted to that sexy beast called chaos. I'm just the one who's honest about the attraction. Wrong. People love me because they know that I am the last prophet of the great God Allah. The great God Allah sent me to tell everyone that they need to submit to him and that the only way they can submit to him is by obeying everything that I say about how to go to the bathroom, how often to shave your pubes, how to kill lizards and dogs, and if they dedicate their entire lives to living and thinking and walking and talking and dressing and shaving and going to the bathroom exactly as I say, then the great God Allah will allow them to spend all eternity deflowering young virgins. Good one. Now let me try. Ladies and gentlemen, hobos and tramps, cross-eyed mosquitoes and bow-legged ants, I come before you to stand here before you to tell you a story I know nothing about. One morning in the middle of the night, two dead fellows stood up to fight. They stood back to back facing each other, drew their swords and shot each other. If you don't believe my lie, it's true. Ask the blind lady on the corner. She saw it too. <laughs> so how did I do? How did you do what? All you did was spout a bunch of nonsense. Oh, that's not what we're doing? I thought I was a student in your master class on the art of homicidal comedy. <laughs> comedy is haram. <laughs> comedy is haram. That's it! There's the messenger of mirth we've all been waiting for. I'm so glad you finally got your own comedy show. You make the Marx Brothers look like the Brothers Grimm. This is not comedy! I have been sent by the great god Allah to show people the halal and the haram and to shout Allahu Akbar as we cut off the heads of anyone who says that Islam is not a religion of peace. <laughs> And I thought my jokes were bad. This is not a joke. I received revelations in a cave. I'm not a fan of caves. Too many bats. 
how can I make it any more clear to you that I am not joking? Wait, are you telling me that you're serious about this? I had the utmost respect for Islam when I thought of it as some sort of cosmic killing joke. And I loved you to death when I regarded you as the world's first homicidal comedian. But if you're saying that you're actually serious about Islam, why, <laughs> you must be crazier than I am. I'm not crazy. The great God Allah declares again and again in the Quran that I'm not crazy. In Surah 7, verse 184, Allah says that there is no madness in me. In Surah 15, verse 6, the unbelievers call me crazy, but Allah knows that I'm not crazy. In Surah 17, verse 47, the unbelievers say I am bewitched. But the law knows that I'm not bewitched. In Surah 23, verse 70, Allah says that I'm not possessed. In Surah 25, verse 8, the unbelievers again say that I'm bewitched. But Allah knows that I'm not bewitched. In Surah 34, verse 8, Allah again says that there's no madness in me. In Surah 34, verse 46, Allah says yet again that there's no madness in me. In Surah 37, verses 36 to 37, Allah says that I'm not an insane poet. In Surah 44, verse 14, the unbelievers again call me a madman, but Allah knows that I'm not a madman. In Surah 52, verse 29, Allah tells me once more that I'm not crazy. In Surah 68, verse 2, Allah reminds me again that I'm not crazy. In Surah 68, verse 51, the unbelievers again call me a madman, but Allah knows that I'm not a madman. And in Surah 81, verse 22, Allah says one more time that I'm not crazy. How many times does the great God Allah have to say I'm not crazy before you finally understand I'm not crazy? So your God has to remind you over and over again like a beating drum that you don't belong in Arkham Asylum? Peace be upon me. And you and your followers would memorize these revelations and recite them regularly? Peace be upon me. I have to say, Mosey, you're only proving my point. What kind of sane person needs to be relentlessly reminded that he's not bat crap crazy? What sort of sane prophet needs his followers to constantly recite verses claiming that he's not stark raving mad? Stop trying to convince me that I'm crazy! If I'm crazy, why do I have 1.6 billion followers? Why is Al-Islam the world's fastest growing religion? You're still proving my point, Mosey. See, there's no difference between us and everyone else. All it takes is one bad day to reduce the sanest man alive to utter lunacy. That's how far the world is from where I am. Just one bad day. You had a bad day once, am I right? I know I am. I can tell. You had a bad day and everything changed. Why else would you run around calling yourself God's final prophet and slaughtering anyone who disagrees with you? You had a bad day, and it drove you as crazy as me. Only you won't admit it. You have to keep pretending that life makes sense, that there's some point to all your struggling. You make me want to puke. Come on, tell me. What made you the way you are? Girlfriend trampled to death by a camel, maybe? Brother carved up and eaten by some tribe of cannibals? I know it was something like that, because something like that happened to me, and I went crazy. Something like that did happen to me many times. In fact, my father, he, he died before I was born. My, my mother, she sent me away to live with a family of Bedouins in the desert. After a few years, the Bedouins got scared of me. They thought I was demon-possessed. Pretty normal childhood, I suppose. So my desert family sent me back to my mother. For a brief time, I was happy. Then she got sick and died, too. 
I was only six years old, which is the same age that Aisha was when she married me. My grandfather, he, he tried to take care of me, but he died two years later. Every mother figure and every father figure I ever had as a child was stripped away from me by the time I was eight years old. Guess you never really recover fully from something like that. Let me get this straight. Behind all the harams and halals and all the akbars, you're just a little boy in a prophet costume crying for mommy and daddy. Would be funny if it weren't so pathetic. Oh, what the heck. I'll laugh anyway. <laughs> Stop laughing at me! Haven't you ever heard of the healing power of laughter? <laughs> Stop laughing at me! Stop it! I can't stand it when people laugh at me! Do you have any idea how many people I've killed simply for laughing at me? Oh, mockery, rejection, abandonment. Does it feel like mommy dying on you all over again? Oh, come on, Mosey. When I saw what a dark, awful joke this world is, I went crazy as a coot, and I admit it. Why can't you just look around and see the reality of the situation? It's all a joke! Everything anybody ever valued or waged jihad for, it's all a monstrous, demented gag. So why can't you see the funny side? Why aren't you laughing? Why so serious? <laughs> well, looks like I can cross Watch a grown man cry <laughs> off my Christmas list. Thanks, Mosey. Christmas is a romp. <laughs> You've got to break them down before you build them up. Now, let's put a smile on that face. What was that? It's a little concoction I call Joker Venom. It'll make you feel better. Read the small print for the side effects. <laughs> Why are you telling me to read the small print? Small print, large print, font size doesn't matter because as everyone knows, I can't read. Wait for it. <laughs> What's so funny? something. <laughs> Tell me. I just remembered that I got my followers to drink kettle urine. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another good one. Think of it. The two of us, me and you, trying to find meaning in a meaningless world. Why be a disfigured outcast when I can be the clown prince of crime? Why be an orphaned boy when you can be a prophet? What a joke! <laughs> ooh, 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 I know! How about a magic trick? Life's been good to me. I'm going to make some of these verses disappear! <laughs> Ta-da! Abrogation! <laughs> Abracadabrogation! <laughs> See my...
Muhammad. There's nothing wrong with being crazy. It's being sane that's the problem. Don't call me crazy. That's not even politically correct. We prefer to be called... Differently sane. <laughs> Differently sane. <laughs> ah, all right. So you liked one flower. Care to smell the other? Hey, what was that? Camel pee. <laughs> Hit me again, Puddin! <laughs> the Joker's classic camel pee prank! <laughs> Speaking of pranks, do you know who the greatest prankster in the history of forever is? The great god Allah! Really? So this Allah of yours is the great god of gags? <laughs> he, he's the best! In the Quran, he brags about being the best of deceivers! And he doesn't disappoint. He once tricked the Jews into thinking that they had crucified Jesus when they didn't. The prank was so epic, even Jesus's Followers thought he was crucified, and they ended up building a religion around the crucifixion. <laughs> Billions of Christians now believe that Jesus died on the cross because Allah did the best prank ever. So Allah started Christianity as a gag? <laughs> That's brilliant! <laughs> could ever trick that many people. But he didn't just prank Jews and Christians. He even pranked Muslims, even me. He tricked us into marching out into the Battle of Badr by giving me a dream, convincing me and my followers that we wouldn't be outnumbered. When we got there, we were totally outnumbered. Oh, that crazy Allah, always tricking his prophet and his followers. My closest companion, Abu Bakr, once said that if he had one foot in paradise, he would still fear Allah's deception. Now there's a man who finally realized what it means to worship an omnipotent prankster. Can you imagine? You've got one foot in Jinnah. You see all your virgins lined up but you're still worried that Allah is just tricking you and he's just about to yell, Psych! And send you into the fiery pits of hell! Oh, Allah truly is the best of all deceivers. I'm starting to like this Allah. <laughs> I'm telling you, he's the best of all deceivers. Wait a minute. It all makes sense now. You're not the comedian here. You're the joke. Allah is the comedian. He's a cosmic, omnipotent, omniscient prankster. And you're his magnum opus. I don't know what magma opioids are, but I like it. So, the great god Allah, as the supreme trickster of the universe, is either the ultimate agent of chaos, or he's chaos itself, trying to recreate the world in his own image. Images are forbidden. The great God Allah is an artist. He sent you to disfigure humanity down to its very core. Allah wants to paint the whole world crazy. Now there's a God who's worthy of worship. So you're ready to convert to Al-Islam? Oh, I'm ready to do more than convert. Watch this. I am a 
prophet of the great God and best comedian and prankster and deceiver ever, the great God Allah! That's not funny, even with the Joker Venom. Pop your brakes then, Mosey. There's a new prophet in town. Well, then this town needs an enema. Careful, the clown prince of prophets doesn't take kindly to being serious. Now, as your prophet, I order you to start laughing. <laughs> you're lying. You think that just because you're the only person in history who's whiter than I am, you get to be a prophet? Allah told me I'm his final prophet. Oh, really? A god who brags about being the best of all deceivers. A god who even deceives you to get you to march into battle. That god told you that you're his final prophet? And you believed him? Tell me, Mosey. You ever dance with the devil by the crescent moonlight? Yes, and he looks just like a black man. But then I realized dancing was haram. As your new prophet, the first order of business is that you need to recite the Shahada! There is no god but that great big prankster in the sky, and Joker is his messenger of mirth. Here, shake on it. Shaking hands with a kafir is haram. Calling your prophet a kafir is <laughs> Haram! Haram! <laughs> Haram! Haram! <laughs> Sanity is just like jihad. Sometimes all it takes is a little push of a button. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's blow ourselves up and get our standing ovation. <laughs> telling me who the next guest should be. Of course, if you post a comment, I won't be able to read it because as everyone knows, I can't read. But wait, there's more. You've laughed, you've learned, you've liked and commented, but the fun doesn't have to stop. Click here for more episodes of Muhammad's Boom Boom Room.